Good morning, friends, and welcome to another physical distancing service here at First Friends. We are so glad to be worshiping together this morning in this way. A couple of announcements before we begin our service. There will not be a threshing, a men's threshing together this week. Bob Henry is going to be on vacation, and the following week will be the Western Yearly Meeting Annual Session. So stay tuned for when that will be rescheduled in August. Um, yearly meeting uh, is going to happen mostly virtually, and uh, we ask you to stay tuned to their website, www.westernyearlymeeting.org, to get the details of when the, the events are going to happen. I'd like to personally thank everybody that's part of the ministry team here at First Friends. Uh, Bob Henry, every week, puts a tremendous amount of effort to pulling the service together. Um, the prayers and, the, and some of the benedictions that I share are from Bob. So I know people think maybe I'm picking those things out, but I'm not. And so um, it's been just wonderful to serve with him as we do this. And then our amazing Rebecca in the office that puts this video together every week. We would not have the quality of video that we have if it wasn't for Rebecca. And then Eric Baker comes in every week and just nails every song the first time that he sits down and plays and sings. So we're really blessed to have him. And also appreciate Sean Porter coming in every, uh, every or periodically to play the organ for us. So let's begin with an opening prayer. Deep listening. God of silence and God of all sound, help us to listen. Help us to do the deep listening to the sounds of our souls, waiting to hear your soft voice calling us deeper into you. Give us attentive ears that begin to separate the noise from the sounds that are you. You who have been speaking to us and through us our whole lives for so long that you can seem like background noise. Today, help us hear you anew. Amen. Shelter me. 
You are my sanctuary. You are my shield. You restore me. You console me. You shelter me. You are my sanctuary. You are my shield. You restore me. You console me. You shelter me. Our scripture reading this morning is 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18, the message version. So we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside, it often looks like things are far, falling apart on us. On the inside, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow. But the things that we can't see now will last forever. Good morning, friends. It's good to be coming into your homes again this morning. I pray you are well and staying safe. This week, I have found myself leaning heavily on the mystical side of the Quaker faith. I've desired more time in meditation and silence, and I've noticed a dire need for contemplating my condition and the condition of my world. I believe a lot of this has to do with the ongoing isolation and my own internal struggles and fear of the pandemic. The weight and tension of the conversations I have been engaged in about race and religion and politics, and as a faith leader, husband, father, friend, and neighbor, how I'm trying hard to lead with integrity while making a difference in my circles of influence. If you happen to have read my As Way Opens article this week in our Friend to Friend newsletter, you would have read my admission to wrestling with not making the needed room for healing from the unexpected during these difficult times. And I'm not the only one who's struggling and has become more contemplative during this time. I would say many of you watching have a lot you are contemplating and trying to figure out. Let me just say, this is not a bad thing. Sure, we become so preoccupied with all that is going on or all that we think we need to be doing and literally miss what God is trying to show us. But more often when we take the time to contemplate, we begin to learn something new about ourselves and even God. Ronald Rollheiser in his book, The Shattered Lantern, actually defines contemplation this way. He says, contemplation is about waking up. To be contemplative is to experience an event fully in all its aspects. I find this definition rather interesting in light of our current condition. This is why taking time to process dialogue and contemplate is so important right now. It allows us to wake up and experience life more fully, to see new perspectives and question our old assumptions. In many ways, the pandemic, the racial unrest, even our political season is forcing us into a more contemplative posture to wake up to realities that impact our lives, the lives of our neighbors, and especially our own faith and religious communities. It's interest, it is in entering this con contemplative posture that we are being opened up wide to our lives, our histories, our beliefs, and our values. And for many, this is really uncomfortable and difficult. I admit, when I go into those times of contemplation like this week, it is not easy, and a lot is being processed and many questions arise. As Adele Albert Calhoun puts it in her Spiritual Disciplines Handbook, contemplation invites us to enter into the moment with a heart alive to whatever might happen. It is not just thinking about or analyzing an event or a person. Contemplation asks us to see with faith, hope, 
and love. It asks us to seek God and the meanings threaded through our days and years so that our experience of being embedded in the life of God deepens and grows. There we are, dealing with the unexpected again, or as Calhoun states it, whatever might happen. Isn't that our current condition? For months now, we have been living with not knowing what might happen, and it looks as if that is how the coming months will proceed as well. Even if we're not, by nature, contemplatives, I sense we may be needing in this season of our lives to embrace this posture. Actually, we may be overdue, as Calhoun puts it, in opening ourselves to the unseen world, to entering into the being instead of just doing of life and becoming alert to the transcendencies in ordinary things. Since the 1980s, the great prophet Ferris Bueller has been trying to warn us, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. In some ways, the pandemic has exposed our lust for experiencing more and the fast-paced desire to do and produce. Before the pandemic, slowing down seemed not an option. Performance and achievements were our goal, and time for contemplation seemed like a bother or an unwanted or useless interruption that could simply be missed. On Sunday afternoon, Sue and I participated in listening group in Carmel outside of St. Elizabeth's Seton Catholic Church. On a normal Sunday, I would have probably still been at the meeting house, but the pandemic afforded us this opportunity. Socially distanced and wearing masks, we sat in a circle with a diverse group of individuals, most of whom were contemplating the unexpected racist words of a faith leader from their own community. In slowing down, and allowing space for contemplation. We were each entering that moment with a heart alive to whatever was going to happen. For about an hour, we saw faith, hope, and love expressed in beautiful ways. No matter what racist words or actions had taken place, we were waking to the possibility and coming alive for the benefit of black lives and the full kingdom of God. Maybe the pandemic is slowing us just enough to have some good and lasting effects on our world. Maybe it will afford us the opportunity to wake up and begin to experience life more fully as God intended it to be. Now, as a student of spiritual formation, I feel it's important not only to preach and teach, but also give opportunities for us to begin developing that contemplative posture. To, to do that, I want to teach you a simple spiritual exercise that I've utilized for many years now. It's called Palms Down, Palms Up. To help you follow along, I will read the directions, but they will also appear on the screen for you to follow along. First, sit comfortably with both feet on the floor and your hands on your lap. Next, breathe deeply and relax. Intentionally place yourself in the presence of your ideal image of God. Now turn your palms down and begin to drop your cares, your worries, your agendas, and experiences into God's hands. Let go of all that is heavy or burdensome in life currently. Remember to relax and breathe deeply. When you've given your cares to God, turn your palms up on your knees. 
Open your hands to receive God's presence, word, and love. Just listen. When you feel prompted to end, take a moment to share your experience with God. You may also find it helpful to journal or artistically express your experience now or at a later time. Later today, I encourage you to return to this experience and look for what is awaking in you. You may want to ask yourself, what in my life do I need to experience more fully today? Now in conclusion, I want to leave you with one last thought, another definition of contemplation. This one from Richard Rohr. He says this, he says, contemplation is an alternative consciousness that refuses to identify with or feed what our only passing shows. In the coming weeks and months, take time to contemplate. Take time to wake up. Take time to enter into a place where you can come alive, as I talked about last week. And you will not be distracted or swayed by the passing shows that you will experience. Now, as we enter a time of waiting worship, take a moment to contemplate the following queries. One, how do I respond to the word contemplation? Two, am I waking up to new understandings during this difficult time? And three, how does my spiritual journey and relationship with God affect my contemplation?
benediction today is in one family. Send thy peace, O Lord, which is perfect and everlasting, that our souls may radiate peace. Send thy peace, O Lord, that we may think, act, and speak harmoniously. Send thy peace, O Lord, that we may be contented and thankful for your bountiful gifts. Send thy peace, O Lord, that amidst our worldly strife, we may enjoy your bliss. Send thy peace, O Lord, that we may endure all, tolerate all, in the thought of your grace and mercy. Send thy peace, O Lord, that our lives may become a divine vision, and in your light all darkness may vanish. Send thy peace, O Lord, our father and mother, that we, your children on earth, may unite in one family. Amen. Have a great week, friends.